The month of October blew me away in my reselling business. There were so many milestones reached. I got and sold so many new to me brands that went on to do really well. But in that mix, there was also a lot of flops. Many brands that I do not plan on picking up anymore and other low profit sales. All of that we're about to get into. And of course, we'll end like always with the final numbers and profit. But also at the end of the video, I do want to wrap it up by sharing eight things that I believe played a role in increasing my sales this month. But first, the sales. We're going to start off with the high price sales. And this month, I decided to include eight in each category. And so we'll start with the lowest and move on to the highest price sale of the month. Number eight on the list is this Patagonia Full Zip Fleece Black Casual Men's Cozy Jacket. It sold on Poshmark for $59. I included a shipping discount when I sent out this offer, so my final earnings was $45.48, and this jacket was listed for 13 days. This item actually performed way better than I expected. I knew that Patagonia was a good brand to be on the lookout for. I know that it performs well, but since it was just a plain black jacket, I didn't expect it to do this well. Like this jacket here, for example, I listed it last winter and it sold on eBay for $134, including shipping. So as you can see, the ones with the patterns do a lot better, but $59 for a plain black jacket is also really good. So look out for this brand and also I encourage you to check out the men's section at your thrift store if you aren't already. And at the very least, just the winter outerwear, there's so many great stuff to be found there this time of year. Moving on to number seven, this time it's an eBay sale. And it was these Wilbred Daria Black Vegan Leather Pull-On High Waisted Legging Pants. They sold for $62.24. This was a promoted listing and after the shipping cost as well, my earnings was $47.60. And these leggings sold in 42 days. These leggings actually sold twice within those 42 days. The first time they sold on Poshmark, I initially listed the leggings for $65 because they were new with tags and that's just what the comps were showing. And when I got an offer on Poshmark for $25, I went ahead and accepted the sale because I only paid like $2 to $4 for them. So I thought it's still a profit. Let's just get items moving. And I was just trying to be nice. Go ahead and give her a deal. But then, to my surprise, she opened a case whenever she got the leggings. She said that they smelled bad. I really doubted that that was true because they were new with tags and also I steam all of my items. I would have smelled the pants if that was the case. I think that she just used that as an excuse because she knows that you cannot return things on Poshmark due to fit. I didn't comment on the case or anything. I just let Poshmark decide. They approved the case and sure enough, when the leggings arrived back to me, they were completely fine, no smell at all. So I relisted them right away. And in the end, it worked out for both of us because she didn't have to keep pants that she didn't like or that didn't fit. And I was able to relist them and sell them for double than I initially did. And I will be on the lookout for more of these Wilfred faux leather pants. They seem to have great comps and also great sell through rate. Number six, we have a Poshmark sale and it was these Fry Reed black leather pointed toe western shooty slash ankle boots. A shooty, if you don't know, it looks like a shoe, but it goes all the way up to the ankle and it also resembles a boot. So if you have anything that looks like that, that will qualify as a shooty, make sure you're using that keyword in your title or in your description. It's a great one to have there. And these shooties sold in four days. So this was just a great sale all around. And I've been pretty lucky with Fry's shoes. I'm able to find them at really low prices at the thrift 
thrift store most of the time about five dollars or below and they go on to do really well selling really fast and for high amounts so look out for this logo when you're out in the shoe section they most of the time stamp it on the side of their shoes number five on ebay i sold a pair of coach brown suede monogram logo women's lace-up runner shoes they sold for $74.19 and that's including shipping. My final earnings was $54.59 and these were listed for four days. I've sold several of these trainer type shoes from mid-tier designer type brands, mostly Michael Kors, but I have also sold some by Steve Madden. In the past though, all of those have been consignment items. So it's family members giving me stuff to resell for them. I keep some of the profit, they keep some of it. These though, I did find at the thrift store, they were marked up at $15. I decided to go ahead and take the chance after doing some comps. And in the end, it was really worth it because I was able to double my money. Number four on Poshmark, we have some Ariat embroidered Western mid-calf cowgirl black leather boots. These sold for $89. This was an offer sent out with shipping discount and the earnings was $62.28 and they sold in 14 days. I feel like Ariots show up in all of my monthly reseller income reports in this high price category. I've gotten a good feel on about how much to pay up for them and what styles will go on to do well. For simple styles like these, I usually pay $20 to $30 and normally I go on to flip them for like $70 to $80. At number three, surprisingly, it's not shoes. We have a pair of men's work pants that sold on Poshmark as well. They were the Snickers Flexi Work Utility Pants with Holster Pockets. I listed them for $115 and I got a very reasonable offer for $97. My earnings was $77.60 and these pants sold in 13 days. This is a brand that I had never heard of before, but in the past I have had good experience with selling items that are especially made for a certain activity. So like with shoes, weightlifting, boxing, Boxing, hiking shoes with pants the horseback riding shoes hiking as well the pants that are made for carpenters or mechanics different things like that those usually sell pretty well so I decided to do comps on these and I was pleasantly surprised that on eBay comps were showing some that have sold really high and sure enough they went on to do extremely well and now this is a new bolo brand in my list sneakers men's work pants moving on to number two an ebay sale and it was these area brown green embroidered men's western mid-calf cowboy boots they were in a size 12 double e which means extra wide they sold for 102 dollars and 99 cents the earnings was $75.52 and they took a total of 89 days to sell. So these did take a little bit longer to sell than most other Ariat boots, but they did have some peeling and some scuffs around the boots and also the fact that they were 12 double E, maybe not many men are out there looking for extra wide boots. But in the end, they sold for more than some of the more simple Ariat boots. So I'm okay with it taking that long. Number one on the list was this Poshmark sale. And it was this Michael Kors Carmen medium flap satchel purse French exotic leopard handbag. It sold for $165. My earnings was $132. And this sold in seven days. I believe this was a very new style from Michael Kors. I couldn't find that many comps on Poshmark or eBay. There was just a handful of them listed and only like one sold between both platforms. In the end, I settled at a listing price of $230. But this was a consignment item. The person who gave me this purse to resell gave me three other similar ones and also gave me a time frame. If they did not sell by that date, then I would have to return them. 
that time frame was almost up so i decided to go ahead and accept this offer when it came in for 165 even though it was a lot less than i really wanted for the purse i thought i already put the work in i already took the pictures created the listing and some profit here is better than nothing now let's move on to eight low price items and the lowest of the low will be at the end number eight on ebay i sold this nfl dallas cowboys navy blue pullover fleece hoodie shipping included they paid 15.99 my final earnings was $7.58 and this hoodie sold in six days. I paid like $4 for this hoodie so in the end that is a terrible profit but the thing with it was that it had a hole in the pocket that I did not notice until I brought it home. So I went ahead and listed it anyway and when I got a super low offer on eBay, I just accepted it. I try my very best to check over items as carefully as possible but inevitably it will happen. I end up with one or two flawed pieces every now and then and when that happens, if the flaw is not too terrible, I go ahead and list it and make the price below comps and accept any offer that comes my way. I mean, it depends on the brand and the desirability of the item, but for the most part with flawed items, I just want to make my money back and maybe a few bucks in profit if possible. Number seven on Poshmark, we have this vintage Carol Anderson long sleeve blue chambray plaid denim maxi dress. It sold for $15, earnings was $12. And this dress sold in 197 days. During the summer, I like to look out for these kind of maxi vintage dresses. And many of them do go on to do really good. But there's also some flops in the mix. And that's the case for this one. Now, I paid like 3 to $4 for these. So I ended up making a little bit of profit on this dress. But in the future, I definitely do need to be a lot more careful with these vintage maxi dresses because not all of them will go on to sell well. Number six on Poshmark, we have these Clarkson Structured Slip-On Red Leather One Button Loafer Shoes. They sold for $15, earnings was $12, and they sold in 30 days. This is another thing that I'm going to start being more picky with. Clark's used to be my best seller brand. I was able to find it very cheap at the thrift store and list it and sell it anywhere from $22 to $25 at least within a month. This one did sell within the month, but I think that was because I accepted this very low offer. Now though, the thrift stores are starting to price them like seven or eight dollars, so there's not that much room for profit. And a lot of them are moving a lot more slowly than 30 days. So I am sticking to picking up only the ones that are interesting in some sort of way or that are more rare. The boots are still doing really well, but for the most part, I wanna try to avoid picking up the simple loafer type Clarks. Number five on Poshmark as well, I sold these Prana Brina Skinny Black Co. Mid-Rice Casual Moto Denim Pants. They sold for $15, earnings there was also $12, and these were listed for 38 days. I listed these for $29 and expected to get anywhere from 22, maybe 24. And that is mainly because these pants had a stain. If they didn't have that flaw, they would have gone on to sell for a bit more. But since they did and I received this $15 offer, I went ahead and accepted it because like I said, the goal with flawed items is just to get them moving. Number four on Poshmark as well, we have this Knox Rose Floral Crochet Blue Long Sleeve Tassel Tie Bohemian Blouse. This sold in a two-piece bundle and the price worked out to be $15 with earnings of $12 and this top took 74 days to sell. The other piece in that bundle was also a Knox Rose top that also took 70 plus days to sell. So Knox Rose is another brand like Clark's that I'm starting to rethink. In the past, it used to sell pretty quick and that was the main reason I picked it up for the quick $10 flip. But as of lately, I am noticing that it is selling a lot more slowly. I mean, many tops do go on to perform like they used to sell really quick, leave me a good 
decent profit, but many are not. My guess is that this is because many reseller YouTubers like myself talk about these brands that are doing well, that encourages other people to pick them up, and then that floods the marketplace, making them sell a lot more slowly or bring the value of them down. I think that's especially true for easy to find brands like Clark's and Knox Rose, which is okay. It's not something that I feel bad about because if I don't talk about the brands that I talk about, someone else will. You'd still learn them from someone else. And that is how I learned about many of the brands that I know about today by watching other resellers. And one thing that I've learned in this reselling business is that there are literally thousands of brands out there to learn about and source and many more pop up all of the time. I'm just mentioning all this here for you to be cautious and stay alert of the highs and lows of these brands and trends. Moving on though to number three is a Poshmark sale and it was this Ann Taylor Wool Blend Coral Knit Pullover Sweater. It sold for $14. The earnings was $11.05 and this took a total of 348 days to sell almost a whole year. So that sale qualifies for two bad categories. It sold really slow and for a really low amount. When I picked up this sweater, I was in the mindset of picking up anything that was a good material, like wool, alpaca, merino wool, all of those kind of winter materials. If it was cheap enough, I would pick it up, and Ann Taylor usually is, but that is the wrong way to go about it. Just like no matter how good a brand is, not everything in that brand will sell. No matter how good the material is, that doesn't mean that it will go on to do well. The item must also have other notable features like be a great size, a good pattern, or just a very desirable color for the season. Moving on to number two on Poshmark again, and we have a bundle sale. This is a bundle I put together and I listed it that way. So it was a lot of universal thread mid-rise skinny denim jeans. They sold for $13 with a shipping discount. That left me with $8.33 in earnings and they took a total of 293 days to sell. So another low and slow sell here. The only good thing about this one is that I got these for free, so the 833 was all profit, but this is something that I wouldn't do again. Even if I get free items now, I try to only list the ones that have at least a fast sell-through rate. That way, if I do end up with the $8 profit or 10 or something like that, at least it's fast and it's not items just sitting in my inventory. First on the list, the lowest sell of all was this Victoria's Secret Pink Super Soft Strappy Lightweight Shirt. It sold for $9 and this one I included free shipping so my earnings was $3.33 but I got this in a Jamar box where the average cost of goods was $8.92 so in the end I lost $5.59. And to top it off, this top was listed for 356 days. So this was just the definition of a very bad sell and also a reminder as to why I never ordered Jamar boxes again and why I shouldn't pick up Victoria's Secret. Back to the good news, we're going to discuss eight fast sellers and I picked out a good mix of some style-based sales and also some brands that were new to me. We'll start with two-day sales and end with some that sold the same day. So number eight on the list, on eBay, I sold these carrots, pull-on, equestrian, ribbed, riding tight pants. With shipping, the buyer paid $57.89. These sold via promoted listing and with a coupon. My earnings there was $45 and these sold in two days. What initially caught my attention about these pants was the label. It just looked very interesting. And then when I saw that they were extra large and I saw, like I said earlier, that they were made for some sort of special activity. At the time I didn't know what, but now I know that these kind of pants that look like this are horseback riding pants. I did my comps on eBay, they looked great, so I went ahead and picked them up. And now this is another Bola brand added to the list. Number seven on Poshmark, we have some Sundance lace-up suede leather retro kiltie ankle booties. 
They sold for $38. Earnings was $33.60. And these also sold in two days. Sundance is like a catalog type brand, kind of like soft surroundings. I hadn't found it in a while, but in the past I had found some of their dresses, tops, and even bottoms. And I just remember them selling really well. I didn't know that they made shoes, but when I saw these, they looked very interesting with the kill tight tassel thing in the front, the broke detail, which are the little holes in the front of the shoe. All of that made them really interesting. So I would have picked them up regardless of brand. But when I saw the Sundance logo in the footbed inside of the shoe, that was just an added bonus. And number six again on Poshmark we have this Gap Corduroy Button Tan Collared Preppy Men's Winter Coat. It sold for $31. Earnings was $23.08 and this coat sold in two days. I very rarely pick up Gap in any other season but when it comes to winter I do. And the same thing goes with other mall brands like Old Navy, Banana Republic, those kind of brands. And what I look for is just larger sizes, great materials, fun patterns like Nordic or Fair Isle, animal print or just any sort of large animal graphic on a sweater that makes them do really well. Number five is another new to me brand. It's Soda Mercari and there were these Lise pull on casual high rise center seam skinny legging pants. They sold for $26. My earnings was $22.35 and these were also listed for two days. What made me look up these pants to begin with was just the feel of them. They felt like a very high quality fabric. They were also a 2X, so those two things put together made me think that maybe there was some value there. When I looked them up, I was surprised at how high the comps can be. The Zay is a New York brand, and from what I can tell from their website, it is more of a min minimalist type brand. Most things are simple, everyday essentials. It looks like an active yet casual wear type brand. All their stuff looks super comfy. On Poshmark, their comps do vary. The simple leggings go for $15 to $25, and things that are more unique, like faux leather leggings, can go up to $35 to $50. Like most other brands, plus size seems to perform a lot better, but still I think this is a good brand to at least do comps for if you ever come across it. Another surprising sale, number four on eBay, we have these Kohan waterproof patent leather knee-high rain boots. They sold for $50.24. Shipping was pretty high on these, so the earnings was $29.92, and these were listed for just one day. In the beginning of my reselling journey, I picked up some Kohan and Nike Air collab loafers. There were some simple slip-on shoes. They sat around forever, so in my mind, I always thought this collab was just no good. So I really hesitated to pick up these boots. In the end, I decided to go for it because they were only $4. They are in season. And in the past, I've had good experience with rain boots. They usually sell pretty quickly. When I got home and started to do the listing and I looked at the eBay comps, they looked really good. I was very surprised. I was even more surprised when I saw that they sold that fast. Number three is another eBay sale and it was the Savannah Jane long sleeve embroidered bohemian baby doll blouse. It was in a size 1X and it sold for $29.99 via promoted listing. My earnings was $19.41 and this also sold in one day. This is another new to me brand. I knew that I heard it somewhere, maybe on a YouTube video or maybe while doing some Poshmark research. It just also fit the aesthetic of some other brands and styles that I pick up like MG and Lucky Brand. It had the whole bohemian aesthetic, it was embroidered and the fact that it was a 1X for all those reasons, I just had no doubt that it would be a fast seller. Number two, on Mercari, we have an airy oversized tan knit French Bulldog Boston Terrier pullover sweater. This sold for $24. The earnings was $20.60 and it also sold in just one day. Same like with the Gap coat, I rarely pick up airy, 
but because it was oversized it was fall colors it had the big dog graphic and it's just in season that's why i decided to pick it up and it even had a little snag inside the collar i noted that in the pictures and the listing and it still sold really fast and for a decent amount and the best part about these sellable ma brand styles is that they are usually not marked up at the thrift store i got this sweater for about two to three dollars and number one on this fast seller list was an eBay sale and it was these Cape Robin lace up faux suede square toe mid calf boots they sold for $38.19 my earnings was $22.26 and these sold the same day that I listed them. I love picking up quirky shoes in heels, dress shoes, and even boots. Not quirky shoes where they're so out there that they're just plain ugly, but those quirky, fashionable type shoes. Like these ones here, there were some square toe booties. They had the lace up all the way from the front of the toe to the ankle. They were suede covered, even the block heel was. That's why I thought it was just a no brainer to give these a shot. And and also they reminded me of another boot brand called Oak Farms. They also make quirky boot styles and I'm always on the lookout for that brand. I initially thought these boots were that brand but they still fit that whole aesthetic which made me pick them up and I'm glad I did. They sold really quick. So those were some of the highlights. Now we have to talk about some of the low lights. We're getting into eight sales that took a really long time. Number eight on the list is a Poshmark sale and it was these Levi's Perfect Waist straight leg high rise light wash blue jeans they sold for $22 earnings there was $15.88 and these jeans were listed for 230 days this is how Levi's have been performing for me lately at least the newer ones with the little thin tag that have the style name and number they sit for over 90 days and sell for about this much as of now i am still picking them up but only when i can get them for two to three dollars and i'm focusing just on larger sizes instead but slowly this style of levi's is moving closer and closer to my do not pick up list number seven on poshmark we have this soft surrounding silk blend pearl button fuchsia long sleeve blouse it sold for 17 dollars earnings was 13.60 and this top was listed for 233 days i was blinded by the fact that this top was 100 percent silk but as i said earlier and i also have to remind myself often of this just because it's a quality fabric doesn't mean that it's going to work and doesn't mean it's going to do well there has to be other interesting features on the item to make it work and i do have a video where i share my sourcing checklist that i try to stick by it's just different things that i try to look for in a piece and the more things that that item has from that list the more likely it is to sell i will list that video in a card up above and also in the description below number six is a mercari sale and it was these ugg short fur black suede sheep skin line shirling booties they sold for $40 and earnings there was $34.54. These boots took a total of 234 days to sell. I will give these boots a break because I did list them towards the end of February so they didn't have that much time to sell before winter was over. Last winter I sold through Ugg boots like crazy and this is usually what I get for the classic ones like these anywhere from $40 to $45 more if they're more interesting this year though it's looking pretty dull with the ugg boots because the thrift stores are pricing them at 25 to 30 dollars whereas last year i was able to get them from 12 to 15 so i think that this year i'm not going to be selling as many as i did last year number five we have this banana republic drop waist flounce hem puff sleeve casual sheath dress it sold on Poshmark for $18, earnings was $12.68, and this dress took a total of 248 days to sell. And this is exactly why I stay away from Ma brands during the spring and summer. 
I picked up this dress because it was cheap and because on the tag inside it said that it was from 2021. So I thought it was a recent style. It has a chance to do well. But I should have known better because this dress is just way too simple. The size is too small and the brand is not that noteworthy. So even if it's cheap, it's still not worth picking up something and sitting on it for that long. Another mall brand that I don't pick up is number four. It was these new with tag Hollister high rise dark wash stretchy denim jegging jeans. They sold on Poshmark for $22. Earnings was $17.60 and these were listed for 258 days. I never pick up this brand because it does not go for much on any reselling platform. I picked these up at the mall for my daughter. They didn't fit her. I lost the receipt so I decided to go ahead and list them to see how they do. In the end, I ended up losing like three to four dollars on these. Number three on Poshmark, we have this Express Wool Blend Duck Down Filled Quilted Reversible Winter Vest. It sold for $20, earnings was $16, and it took 277 days to sell. This is another winter relist from last year. I listed it in January, it never sold. So when the cold weather started to come around again, I decided to list it again to get some new eyes on it. This thing was bulky. I really did not want to sit with it till next year. So when I relisted it, I priced it to sell. Hence why it ended up selling for a low price. I really do recommend if you haven't started doing so, go ahead and relist all your old fall and winter items to make sure that they sell this time around and you're not stuck with them for another year. And that was my previous video, how I relist items. I also shared some tips and tricks to make the most of it. And again, that video will be linked in the description of this video. Number two on Poshmark, we have these Dolce & Gabbana straight leg pants. They were tan, tall, long inseam puddle trousers. They sold for $50. Earnings was $40 and these were listed for 294 days. Since these were designer pants, I thought they would go on to do well, but they did not. They ended up sitting for a very long time, but I was not giving up so easily because I paid $20 for these. So I relisted them on all platforms several times. I rearranged the title and description many times as well, adding different keywords to try to get them sold. I saw that keyword puddle trouser one day on Poshmark's trending page. And since they were long inseam pants, I thought these will puddle around someone's ankle. So I went ahead and added that keyword. I also decreased the price on a closet clear out day. So I don't know what of all of that did the trick to finally get them sold, but I'm glad that they finally did. And I'm also glad that I was at least able to double my money after all that trouble. And number one on this slow selling list was a Mercari sell. And it was this Columbia water resistant winter full zip cold weather jacket. It sold for $27. My earnings was $23.22 and this coat was listed for 327 days. This was my mistake because the coat did have what looked like a makeup stain inside one of the sleeves. And I think that's one of many of the reasons why it sat around for so long. And just like many other items in this list, it took many relists and adding many keywords into the title and description to finally get this jacket sold. So those were the sales. Now let's get into the final numbers. Total sales for the month of October was $5,583. Earnings after fees and shipping was $4,213. My cost of goods for everything that sold this month was $1,000. 296 and my final profit there was $2,917. So close to the $3,000 profit dollar mark. Breaking down the sales by platform, on Poshmark I made a total of $3,638. eBay was $1,339 
and Mercari was just $606. I am very shocked by how much all of my numbers jumped this month. So many records were broken. That is the most money I've ever made in a single month reselling and also the most I've made on Poshmark and on eBay in a single month. Macari, on the other hand, it's just cruising along. This is about the third month in a row that sales have been slow over there. But I am not one to give up on a platform. I like to at least give them a chance. On eBay, I listed for over a year and a half before I started to see consistent daily sales. But I am just going to give it this month and see how it goes. I'm trying to give it a little bit more attention by promoting listings, relisting as I've been saying, sending out offers. If I see that things aren't picking up, then I may start to consider replacing Mercari with another platform like Facebook Marketplace, Depop, or something like that. Because even though I do have lists perfectly that helps me cross list, it still does take up time to do the listing there and also to delist those items that sell on other platforms. So if I can put that same amount of work into another platform and get more out of it, then that would be better. But as I said, for now, I'm sticking to it. We're going to see what happens next month. Listed items this month was one 172 and on average that's five to six new listings every day so as you can see I am still slacking with my listing five to six daily listings is decent it's good it's keeping my sales up but if I could get to that seven to eight daily listings instead then I would probably be a lot more closer to my goal of six thousand dollars in sales in a month but I must be doing something right because items sold this month was 184. That's five to six items sold every day and that is the most items that I've ever sold in a single month. Another number that went up was my average selling price which was 30.51. And so did my average cost of goods, which was 704. But those two numbers, I expected them to go up as we got into winter, where I started selling bulkier jackets and boots and things like that. I pay more for those items, but they also sell for more. And to wrap up this video, I do wanna share eight things that I think contributed to the increase in sales. I've been talking about many throughout this video, but I just want to re-emphasize them here and talk a little bit more about them. The first one is that it's Q4. That's why my sales went up. It's just busier this time of year. The second thing though is that I've been focusing on getting those in-season items when I'm outsourcing. So when I go, those, those are the first places that I go to, the boots, the jackets, the sweaters, the men's section, and their winter outerwear. All of those things is what I'm focusing on getting and listing first. The third thing is that I am promoting my 30% off bundles on Poshmark a lot more. I have a header at the top of my closet that says if you purchase two or more items, you get 30% off. I also created a listing that explains how that works and I try to share that listing to the top of my closet. That way it stays at the top and it is more likely to be seen by potential buyers and they can take advantage of it. So I have been selling a few more bundles this month. Number four is that as always, I've been using Closet Clear Out and that is a sale that Posh mark runs about twice a week on that day if you drop the price of your item then Poshmark will cover part of the buyer shipping if they end up buying so that's the gist of it but there are many regulations and tips and tricks to make it work so if you want a video on closet clear out make sure to leave it in the comments and if you have any specific questions that you would like me to answer in that video leave that down in the comments as well number five is that I dropped the price of items that weren't moving so all those old winter items I went ahead and dropped the price often to try to get them going to try to get more likes all of these platforms do promote items that have been recently price dropped 
I know Poshmark and Mercari do, so that also helps if you have a stale item that isn't getting that much attention. Go ahead and drop the price by at least 10% and that should get some activity going on it. Number six, as I've been saying, I relisted a lot of my older winter and fall items. If you have items that have been sitting there since last year, chances are they need some updates, maybe in the keywords, the description, the title, or the price could have changed for it as well. So it's always good to go back and check all of that stuff, update it to try to get it sold. Number seven is that I've been sharing my closet once every hour, every day. And I think many of you know that that is very important because it keeps your items at the top. When someone searches for something, your item is more likely to be shown first. And it also shows on your listing that you updated your item recently. So that just gives people more confidence to buy from you. I know for me, when I'm shopping on Poshmark, if I see an item that was listed and that has been last updated since last year I don't even bother that just tells me those buyers aren't active so sharing your item boosts them to the top and it also shows people that you're active on the app and that you're going to ship those items quickly or respond to questions at the very least. Along with sharing my closet, I've also been trying to do a lot more community sharing on Poshmark and community following as well. And that just means that I share other people's listings and I follow new poshers every day. I just feel that this brings more people to my closet so that they can see my 30% off banner in the listing that is promoting that sale. And to do all of those Poshmark activities I've been using a free tool called flip and that is just an extension that you download to your computer and then you connect your Poshmark closet to it and from there you can set many activities on autopilot you can schedule your sharing you can send out automatic offers every time someone likes your item you can automatically follow new closets as well and so many other things so those are some of the things that I feel have had an impact in my sales in the month of October. I will leave a link to that free flip tool down in the description along with any video tutorials that I've made that discuss any of the topics that I just mentioned. So overall, it was a really exciting month. Things were just rolling in. It felt good to have many sales come in daily. For next month though, my only goal is to keep my sales at at least 5,000. Hopefully it is a lot more than that, but I'm not going to overwork myself trying to make that happen. In the comments down below, let me know how was your month in your reselling business? Are your sales steady? Are they picking up? Tell me in the comments down below. And that's all for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.